everyone, Dr. Dan Bachman here. Let me just introduce myself real quick. So I'm a chiropractor. I'm here in Austin, Texas, and I have a sports med and rehab clinic where we do pre and post surgical rehab for spine and extremities. So not just backs and necks. And today I wanna to talk directly to you guys and girls in the SACA Sports Council, which is near and dear to my heart. I'm a member myself of the, of the ACA Sports Council, and I'm super glad to find anyone who has my passion, which is sports injuries and rehab. So we're gonna talk about tennis elbow, otherwise known as lateral epicondylitis. And let me tell you, you're gonna see a lot of this. And this is a super common problem. You're almost certainly gonna have patients come in with this thing. And guess what? You don't have to be a tennis player to get this problem. It is a, an overuse injury and uh, routinely you'll see folks who have been doing a lot of extra grip work of some kind around the time the pain started. And, and this problem is famous for being a nagging injury, meaning you'll hear patients say, yeah, I had it, I had it a year ago and then it just kind of went away and then it came back and then it went away again. I may have gotten a, a steroid injection in there it helped for a little bit, but then the pain came back. So it's one of those nagging injuries that, that is kind of uh, infamous for, for just not going away or just keeps coming back. But guess what? My protocol that I use, it just heals it up super fast routinely as long as the patient does exactly what you tell them. So all my rehab protocols work very quickly, but this particular one, uh, elbow pain, it could be uh, medial elbow pain or lateral, as well as plantar fasciitis. Those are kind of the top three areas that are famous for, for being nagging and therefore require exactly the right steps to be taken in order for these issues to resolve. So um, later, lateral elbow pain is, uh, tennis elbow is an overuse injury. So around the time their pain started, it's usually a lot more gripping exercise. So it could be tennis. So like for a backhand, contacting the ball with the racket uses the uh, wrist extensor muscles and if they're just starting a new tennis program or maybe they're increasing the number of hours they're playing, this is the exact kind of recipe for this problem starting. It's usually a ramp up period into something, a whole bunch of something that they don't typically do a lot of. And basically it just gives this, these tendons a little more work than they're able to do. And they don't snap in two, but they get inflamed. There's some micro damage. And then once the inflammation sets in there, which is just your body's, uh, it's healing process. Your body's sending inflammation to that area to repair it so it can heal. But if it doesn't get the right conditions to heal, it just kind of parks there, it just stays there. So we're gonna go over today um, my treatment methods. They're very straightforward. Um, it's basically a two-part process, a three-part process. So it's breaking up any scar tissue that may have accumulated in there that can kind of glue those muscles and tendons and, and fascia together and keep them from moving in a safe way. And I'll, I'll use massage for that, myofascial release, and then some other massage techniques. Uh, the second part is strengthening. So we'll talk about how to strengthen the grip muscles and, and uh, wrist extensors in particular. So, and we're gonna be using eccentric loading. So eccentric is the down part of any movement, otherwise known as the negative part of a lift. And if you exaggerate the down part of the movement or the eccentric movement over time, what you get is you build strength faster and you also make the tendon stronger. So you'll see us talking about that a little bit in, the, in, the, in a minute here. But if you have a stronger, bulkier, higher tensile strength tendon, guess what? It's harder to overuse it. You can give it more load and it can still handle it. So the effect I compare it to is if you had some fishing line that was 10 pound test and you gave it 12 pounds, it's gonna snap. But if you bulk that, that uh, fishing line up to 40 pound test, well, it's gonna be a lot harder to overload that, that uh, fishing line. And same thing with a tendon. So that's why for all tendonitis, whereas a patellar tendonitis, Achilles tendonitis, um, or an elbow tendonitis, I always incorporate eccentric loading into that, that recovery program. Now the third part of the overall treatment plan is making sure we're giving the, the elbow relative rest from the things that make it hurt the most. So that doesn't mean they have to stop all gripping activities. So let's say they're a construction worker and they have to do a lot of cranking on um, um, screwdrivers or power tools, that can give it to you. Well, they can't stop their job, but we're gonna minimize the amount of the trigger activity they do just to give that elbow a chance to kind of catch up and start healing. Um, if they're a tennis player, I may say, hey, no competitive play for a week. You can kind of hit off a backboard with 25% power full range, 25% power. If serving doesn't hurt, you can serve all day. Basically, I want them as active as they can be doing the things that don't make their elbow significantly worse after. 
The pain afterwards is the more important kind than the pain during an activity because it's a more um, it is a more clear indicator as to whether or not they did overdo it on that on that elbow. So let's take a look at this rehab protocol. We've got a model who's going to join us today. You'll get to meet Ben. He's a pre-med student who has shattered us here in the office uh, for three or four months. He's uh, from University of Texas and they send lots of their pre-med students to shadow with us. Ben's going to be our model and we'll kind of walk you through what I do with my tennis elbow patients and we'll even talk about how to return to play safely. So. Hope y'all enjoy it, and let's take a look. Hey, Ben. Hey, Good Doc. to see you, man. Good to see you as well, sir. Hey, everybody, this is Ben Popok. He's a pre-med student. He's uh, shadowed us here in the office for three or four months uh, over the year. He's part of the UT's pre-med student shadowing program. He's a top-notch guy and super sharp. I'm glad to have him here. He's graciously agreed to be our model today as we demonstrate uh, rehab for tennis elbow or lateral epicondylitis. All right, let's take a look at that elbow. All right, so. Tennis elbow is basically considered to be pain kind of on the lateral aspect of the elbow. And the, the single best test is I just press their traction up a little and then I bend his wrist down and back. So basically all this is is myofascial release, pin and stretch. And actually your, your wrist <laughs> extensor feels pretty tight, so I'm betting this is kind of sore. A little bit a little sore. A little bit sore. So I just kind of explore a little to see where, oh, there's a tight section there too. So I'm looking for hard sections in the muscle right here. And basically any area that hurts for me to press on as I do myofascial release here needs it. So what I've mapped out is a section kind of right through here that is the tightest of all the areas. That means that's where we're gonna focus on the most. Now also I'm gonna check behind his elbow. So oftentimes even though you have elbow pain here, the tricep will be tight, so I'll press up in here, kind of traction proximally, and bend his elbow, which is basically myofascial release for the tricep, and I'll just ask Ben, any soreness in there as I do this? Not yet. Good. So again, my rule for massage and myofascial release is just massage, is where it hurts to do it is where you need it. So to figure out if he needs it, we just kind of test and explore, and if we find any sore spots, great. So it looks like it's gonna be this section here. Now, let's go over some treatment. Come on over this way. Okay, so now we've established that Ben has some tender areas on the outside of his elbow, which means that's where he can benefit from massage. So we're gonna go straight into it. And typically, I like to grab around the entire arm that lets you apply a little more pressure easily rather than just pinning with just a thumb. So grip, traction up a little, straighten the elbow, and then I'm just going to manually Flex his wrist and extend. And basically, I'm pinning the muscle down, dragging it back and forth under my thumb, which forces it to loosen, breaks up any old scar tissue that may be kind of gluing stuff together in there. So remember, this is a tendonitis. I'm gonna do 20 or 30 passes. There's no magic number. But I'm gonna spread that across all the painful areas we have found on Ben. Now, I'll always tell Ben, let me know if it's just unbearably painful. I will go easier, but take as much as you can because that just means we get more work done today. So we're kind of down to the end of it. This is about the section. So we'll do maybe 10 more. So remember, massage is intentionally bruising you a little bit to break up scar tissue, which is well worth the other benefits, but can leave you a little sore, stiff feeling. Usually it's mild and brief, usually just after the first session or two. So with a tendonitis, we want to break up uh, any of the scar tissue, make sure that there's, that there's, if there's any swelling, this allows fluid to escape. So if it was a little puffy around there, um, it moves a little more freely. Okay, that's literally the first session of myofascial release that we're gonna do on Ben's elbow. Now, let's try an alternative version. So for this, go ahead and stand up, Ben, and turn to face me. And I'm gonna have you squat down and put your arm flat on the table like this, yes, and get that upper arm right all the way down, yes. Now I'm going to put a little bit of lotion here. We're going to do a kind of a, a massage technique I made up myself. This is just a little bit of emollient on him, just regular lotion. And I'm going to use the heel of my hand and support it, and I'm going to slide all the way up across here. It's about to get interesting You're right around here. I'm going to go ahead and pass all the way up across.
across the edge of the bicep near the shoulder. I'm going to do 10 passes like this. I'm using slightly different angles, so I'm a little more kind of on the lateral aspect now. And Ben's got a wince going on on his face, <laughs> which just tells us that he can benefit from this. I'm going to do 10 of these. Let me know if it's more than you can take. I will go a little easier. That's a good one there, too. And by the way, the reason I can tell where it hurts on Ben is because the muscle feels harder in there than it should. So good healthy muscles kind of soft and supple to touch. So anytime you find hard ropey sections like we're finding in some of these spots, that just means he can benefit from massage in those spots. Also, it is, a, it is pretty much impossible to harm someone with massage, as you all know. So unless, of course, maybe they have cancer, if there's a known cancer risk in the area, then we don't want to do massage in that area. Not automatically dangerous, but it re reduces the risk. But uh, unless we have a known threat of that, there's a couple other conditions we might not. Now, here's another trick I'm going to do. I lay my thumb flat. I'm going to press my thumb and use it as a sharper tool to slide right along the blade of his ulna there. That lets me get a little deeper. I know it's hard to see but most of the pressure is being applied with my thumb. This takes very little effort for me, which by the way, guys, if, you, uh, if you've done much manual work, you re you'll realize pretty quick that you can blow your thumbs out. These things I'm doing, I'm just kind of leaning my body weight on him, takes very little effort from me. And I like to steady the wrist there because the elbow likes to bend sometimes. And also in this position, I can control how much pressure I give him quite easily. So I, I'm just leaning the weight of my upper body on him, which is what applies the pressure, but I could easily ease off a bit. And I'm also stroking only up towards the heart, which I'm sure you've learned as well. And it's, it's not dangerous to stroke away from the heart, but since his, his venous blood flow is heading back towards his heart, we're just helping it along as opposed to backing it up into his hand if we were to go away from the heart. So I do, I know I've done a little over 10 here, but 10 or so passes as deep as your patient can handle, hitting all the painful spots. All right, you survived your beating. <laughs> How's everything so far? Feeling good. Okay, so now uh, let's take a look at strengthening for the wrist flexors as well. Okay, so we've done the mobility part of things. It's really pretty straightforward. We just did some myofascial release, then we did a second version of massage use, using the whole forearm and even the upper arm. Now we're gonna do some strengthening, and specifically we're gonna do eccentric loading. So when it comes to a tendonitis of any kind, which is a, which, what a lateral epicondylitis is, that just means the tendon has been overused to the point where it's gotten inflamed. And inflammation, as we all know, is just your body's response to an injury. In this case, it's a small one, it's micro damage, but the inflammation is your body's attempt to heal it. So that just means the tendon was too weak to handle the load that Ben has been giving it. So if we can bulk up that tendon and make it a stronger tendon, so it has a higher tensile strength, basically take it from a 10 pound test tendon to a 40 pound test tendon, well, guess what? next time he tries to do play tennis or do a lot of gripping or twisting work with his arm, his tendon can handle it, will not get the tendonitis because it's stronger. Eccentric loading, which is the negative part of a movement, um, dragging the eccentric part out over time is, is a great way to make tendons stronger and therefore able to handle more load. So we're using a flex bar. It's just a rubber bar and you can see they have different calibers there. The uh, bigger the bore, harder it is to twist. I use the red one for pretty much all patients. It's pretty versatile. So if you grip that, now he has, we're working on his right elbow. To start, grip in your left hand, and I'll mirror you here, Ben. Elbow straight, and then reach around with your right hand, grip, and twist back on the throttle. That's the start position. Now spend six seconds releasing it all the way. four, five, six. Crank all the way back again. Down, two, three, four, five, six. Any severe pain in your elbow as you do this? No, sir. Good. So this 
protocol is also known as the Tyler Twist, named after the uh, physical therapist who invented it. It's, here's the protocol. It's two sets of 15 reps with a six second release on each one. And you can do this daily. And the only variable here, we have two variables that we'll play with to make sure the dose is not too much for his elbow. Um, the variables are, do we do it daily? Or do we do it every other day, just to give a little recovery time? So, um, and the second variable is how much resistance we give. So if you take a peek here, I can reach about to here, and you can see how much twist I'm giving that bar. Now, if I want to make the resistance bigger, I can grip much further, and you can see there's a lot more twist, and it's a lot tougher to twist this bar. So try, hold only with your left hand, reach around a little further, grip, and then straighten back. Does that feel like more resistance? A lot more resistance. And yeah. then a six second release there, nice and slow. Good, and repeat. Now let's have you do uh, 15 reps. And as you're working, here are the fine tuning tools for this. He's allowed to have pain in his elbow. In fact, it's almost expected, especially if someone has a more acute form of the uh, uh, lateral epicondylitis, the tennis elbow, they're probably gonna have some pain. I just don't want severe pain three reps in a row. So if they did, if he did have severe pain three reps in a row, we're not gonna stop the thing, we're just gonna back off on the amount of twist. So if he was this, a whole bunch of twist, and it, and it gave him severe pain three reps in a row, we're gonna make it a, a lower resistance twist. So still two sets of 15 and a full recovery between sets. That just means let your breathing come down to normal before you start the next set. It gives a little recovery time. Now here's the other variable on this exercise. Oh, the first two or three days of him doing this are gonna tell us if we got the dose right, like the right amount of resistance and the right frequency. So it, he's gonna feel little, a little extra beat up and a little sore in his elbow the first day or two, that's normal. But if he has lots of extra pain, like lots of extra pain above what he typically has after two days, then we're gonna say, let's do the same thing every other day with a little less resistance. So all we're looking for is a safe entry point into this exercise that he can handle without big setbacks. Then we'll start increasing the resistance as time goes by. So two sets of 15 every day or two, increasing resistance as he tolerates it, which means he's getting stronger, and um, continue that until his elbow pain pretty much fades away. Now at the, at the same time he's going through this process, we're gonna start gradually reintroducing his trigger activities so he knows what those are. You know, it may be shaking hands, it may be opening doorknobs, it may be, if he's in construction, it could be using a screwdriver or a power drill. It could be um, farmer's carries in the gym, pull-ups, any gripping stuff, rows. Um, we'll start reintroducing those things. And the rule is always, anytime you're coming back to something that used to hurt, the first two sessions of that thing need to be stupid easy. Stupid easy means slow movements the first two times. Slow is safe, it's hard to hurt yourself in slow motion. It also means no straining or struggling the first two sessions. But what that does is it finds you a safe re-entry point into that thing that doesn't hurt and can't hurt you that you can then start adding intensity to in future sessions as your body adapts to that thing. All right, I'm sure you've done about 15 there. That's 15 right there. Hey, perfect timing. <laughs> so how's your elbow feel so far? Feeling good. All right. So these are super cheap. I think I get mine on Amazon. I think they're like 12 bucks a piece. The red one is plenty for most folks. If you need more resistance, you can always crank hot harder on it. And um, as long as you see your pain trending better or your patient's pain trending better over time, you're fixing their problem. And this does not have to take months and months to fix, by the way. Even though if you look online and you look at all the protocols, they'll say, typically takes several months and this, of course like we said this thing is also famous for coming back over and over again and being a nagging injury but if you follow these protocols this is what I use a week and we've reintroduced everything at least at some entry entry level hope that seemed helpful Ben thanks for helping us out sir happy to help yes thanks for the if work. you guys have questions definitely give me a give me a shout my email is Dan at Bachman Technique you can always find me on Instagram for lots more content like this uh, at at Bachman Technique Hope to see you all there.